child, did Shay say he wanted glaucoma love when he signed the contract to be on the show? I, I'm confused. What's up, it's Nikki. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be recapping the Netflix series Love is Blind Season 2 Reunion. Now guys, as I was watching the reunion, I was like, child, I'm not doing a video on this. This was the oddest, most uncomfortable, just weird and off energy reunion that I have ever seen in my entire life. Was it just me? The energy seemed so freaking odd and I was catching like secondhand embarrassment. Oh, I was crazy. I don't know. The reunion did not seem to flow well to me. Also, so much was just glossed over and just not addressed at all. Child, look, Shayna should have got way more heat. I don't know why they were giving Shay all the heat and just letting everybody else skate. They let Danielle skate. They let Shayna skate. Pretty much everybody, really, child. Why the heck did they not play the scene with Shayna and Shane where she was calling his relationship fake? Why didn't they play the scene where she said that she can't shake her attraction to Shane? I who was over this? Why was none of her ish really addressed? Why didn't we ask Kyle why he kept pushing for the relationship to work when Shayna left his behind in Mexico? I don't know. I I always liked Nick Lachey. I haven't seen him in a million years, but I used to love his show with Jessica Simpson. But child, look, Nick and Vanessa for me did not do very well hosting the reunion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Love is Blind season two reunion was just a mess, child. I don't know. When I watch, first of all, when I first turned it on, it, the energy, I don't know. And when I watch something like this, I want it to be genuine or I want it to feel genuine because it's a reality show. I want it to feel like people are genuinely here to find love. I don't want mess with stuff like this. Why didn't we hear more from the married couples? There is certain amount of drama that will naturally occur in a situation of love and dating and being engaged, especially being engaged quick. But this just felt like trash. Like, this just felt like mess. How the hell did Shake get on the show? How did he get on the show? What is the interview process like? Because the second Shake was in an interview talking about he won't blur in love, they should have been like, all right, bro, show him the dough. This ain't the show for you. I just feel like the hosts are a married couple. I would think they would champion love a lot more and call out a lot more of the individuals. Call out the individuals who are making a joke of the experiment. Personally, I don't tune into stuff like this for mess. That's why I tune into Love & Hip Hop. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I tuned into the housewives but I tuned into stuff like this to see love and relationships and the natural drama that just comes with that I was actually really interested to hear from the married couples I was really interested in whether or not the experiment actually worked in real life Ayana and Jared to me seem to have some real issues and disconnect and I was surprised when Ayana said yes at the altar so I really wanted an update into what was going on with them since they got married. They pressed her more about if they was physical in Mexico than they was pressing about important ish. Nick and Danielle Child was a damn mess because Danielle is toxic. I just wish we got more from the married couples. I really wish they focused less on Shake. Like, who cares? It is, it just is what it is with Shake. Focus on people who are here for love. Child, did Shake say he wanted glaucoma love when he signed the contract to be on the show? I, I'm confused. But y'all, was I the only one taken aback by how the cast was reacting to Shake? Like when I first started playing a reunion, I was like, what's going on? During the entire season, everybody seemed cool with Shake. Jared was laughing and down with Shake when he came to him about deep. Like I was like, why y'all giving him this energy now? I don't know. That threw me. 
But then all of a sudden at the reunion, nobody likes him when everybody was cool with him doing the series. I don't know. And I get it. They said that Shay's behavior and stuff was even worse than what was shown. But still, everybody seemed cool with him throughout the entirety of the season. So, I don't know. I was taken aback when the reunion started. I was taken aback by the energy that everybody seemed to have. I don't know. It it was off to me. Everybody pretty much, though, hating every time Shay opened his mouth was pretty hilarious to me. <laughs> and it was halfway just like, why is y'all giving him this much when y'all wasn't doing that during the season? Shay kept saying that. He says what everyone is thinking. Well, child, I don't know what everybody thinking, but he ain't say it's that I was thinking. Well, except that Shayna accepted Kyle's proposal to stay on the show. I was down with everything that Nick was saying to Shay, even though they needed to come at Nick behind too. But they needed to let Shay talk when it came to Shayna and Kyle because nobody not the host, was getting in their ass like they needed to. And child, can somebody please give Shayna some damn glasses so she can stop squeeing all the time? Y'all, that was hurting my nerves. That ish was driving me crazy, Lord Jesus. Was it just me? Every time the camera would pan over to Shayna, she would look like this. Y'all, y'all, <laughs> Every time I, I was like glasses on the set, please somebody get the girl. She was squinting so much, it was making my eyes hurt. I feel like I ain't have my glasses. So I'm like, bitch, why you squinting? So apparently Natalie was not aware that Shane was torn between her and Shayna. Turns out Shayna lied to Natalie about what she went into the pods to talk to Shane about. Now, isn't thou shalt not lie one of the Ten Commandments? I don't know the commandments, child, but Christians ain't supposed to be lying. <laughs> but Shayna ended up going in there and confessing her feelings for Shane, which Natalie didn't know until the series aired, apparently. Now, after all the ish that Shayna pulled throughout the series, after all the ish that went down with her, the lesson she took away was... She wishes that she would have been more forthcoming with her feelings for Shane. Girl, what? Okay, child. Like, why was nobody calling her out? Like, girl, really? That's what you took away? That was it? You must don't do well in a Bible study. You don't, you ain't get the lesson. You know what? I wish she would have, though. I wish she would have so we could have seen how Shane was going to spiritually lead her since that was so important to Shayna. Y'all, everything that Shayna was saying about saying yes to, to Cal and then having her meeting with Shane, I didn't care about any of it. I really didn't. Sorry. It was just BS. And I give it to Shake on that point. It was a lot of fake ish and backpedaling. Literally every time Shayna squinted her eyes and opened her mouth, I was just like, okay, child. Okay, child, can we move on? Because if y'all are not going to really get to the ish, then what is the point? Shayna literally only embarrassed herself the entire season, if you ask me. Saying that she ended things with Cal because she is just such a devout Christian was plain BS. And I'm pretty sure everybody should have seen through that. Everybody. Shayna literally spoke about being attracted to Shane after they left Mexico. Shayna literally sat there with Shane, throwing Natalie under the bus and dogging out their relationship. Shayna and Kyle were in the fakest relationship of them all, but she had the nerve to call Shane and Natalie's relationship fake. Why we ain't play a clip of that? Why was that not addressed at the reunion? Now, <clears throat> Look, they needed to get in Kyle's ass as well. However, the job that Shayna was saying about him proposing with his mom's ring, look, I have to respectfully disagree. 
Man proposing with a family heirloom is typically sweet and sentimental. <clears throat> I also feel like if you are not 100%, then Kyle using his mom's ring, actually, I would think, would be more of a push and incentive to decline the proposal. Because I would think you would be thinking, this is mom's ring, yeah, I don't feel right taking this ring. I don't feel right putting this ring on. Not, oh, I'm not into this, but let me put the ring on. And child, Shayna wearing the ring on her thumb or whatever the hell reminded me of Carrie wearing Aiden's ring on her dang necklace. The fact of the matter is, Shayna did not want Kyle, period. But even if I give her the benefit of the doubt, right, to say that she was overwhelmed or whatever the heck in the pods, instead of her just leaving Kyle in Mexico, she should have broken things off with Kyle in Mexico. She never really, I don't know. Shayna was not attracted to Kyle. She saw him in person and it was a letdown. That's fine, girl. Just say that. She was more attracted to Shane than Kyle. That's fine, girl. Just say that. Don't bring God into a child. I feel like there was a way to just let Kyle down in Mexico. And she never really took accountability for going along with it as long as she did. If she couldn't just decline a proposal... She could have just broke up in Mexico. But I do think the religious thing was a cop out and not the real reason. I do think she kept things going with Kyle to either stay on the show or have a chance to be around Shane. Because she was definitely trying to put a bug in his ear about Natalie and about his relationship. I wanted them to play that scene so bad because I wanted her to answer for it. Shayna was so turned up in that scene, talking to Shane. Shayna was being so freaking underhanded and disgusting. The fact that they did not play the conversation with Shayna and Shane was such a mother freaking messed up. Who was over this ish? The fact that they let Shayna skate with her religious excuse, with all the comments she was making about Shane in her interviews. I mean, so the Christian sat there trying to get in a man's ear about his fiance, and they just let all that ish skate. Shayna, the Christian, spoke of being attracted to Shane after Mexico, and they just let all that ish skate, all those comments. I don't know, y'all. It just seemed to me like Shayna did so much ish that they did not address or really get into. Shayna could have saved a lot of grief and time if in Mexico, she just told Kyle, look, I'm just not into you. I cannot marry you. Man, that's so easy. Shayna said her big issue with Kyle was religion. But she was talking sex and what she was wearing with Shane. Uh, hello? Was anybody paying any damn attention? And I wanted them to have her elaborate on why she said Shane being with Natalie was comical. Especially given the fact that her brother made those proud to be American comments. Is it because Natalie is Asian American? Is it because Shane picked an Asian American over Shayna? Like I wanted her to answer for a lot of his child. But Shayna didn't feel bad about anything that played out over the season. She didn't. Because this is how she operates in life. It's, it is just really obvious to me that she competes with other women. It is really obvious to me that Shayna feels like she is better or above women of color. Sorry, but that's the vibes. That's the vibes that I get. Why was Shane being with Natalie comical? The way Shayna moved on the show is how she moves through life. It's obvious. And she sees nothing wrong with any of it. Shayna just be creeping in line with her Bible child. And her excuses to get out of it was God. Because Kyla ate uh, atheist. Shayna did not mean any of her empty apologies. Okay, so Shayna had her ish to answer for. However, they needed to get into Kyle. They let that nigga skate on ish as well. Really the host of everybody skate. Except Shake. 
I really didn't have much negative to say towards Kyle during the entire season. I did feel like he should have seen that Shayna did not want to be in a relationship with him. I wish they would have called that out and pressed him on that. I wanted Kyle to answer, why would you push a relationship with a person who freaking left you in Mexico? You're not leaving me at the Dollar General, bro. Who, like, how do you try to be with somebody who consistently has and says reservations about being in a relationship with you? I wanted them to question when he said he would make her like him or some ish like that that he said in Mexico. Shayna was obviously giving him the cold shoulder. There was no affection between them. She physically recoiled and wanted to get the hell away from Kyle. How did he not see that? What was things from his perspective? Did he think the girl was in love with him? Like, why didn't we question him? I felt bad for Kyle being strung alone by Shayna, but he definitely played a part in my opinion. But I also did not like his attitude during the reunion. When he called out that he should have proposed to Deep. Nah, child, she need to stay away from, from him. No, girl, no. No, girl, no. For me, Kyle proposed to Shayna. He spent all his time on the show trying to be with Shayna. Just to kind of dog her, in my opinion. What happened to everything you loved about Shayna? All the feelings you had that made you want to propose and marry the girl. I don't know. That is suspect to me. It's suspect. When someone spends the whole season wanting to be with a person and they don't choose you, the itch don't work out. And then it's like you suddenly forget that you love the person. Kyle, you wanted Shayna, period. Tongue hanging out your mouth, slobbering, eyes wide. For me, Kyle saying I should have proposed to Deeks was disrespectful. I'm sorry. It was. Shayna is responsible for her actions, but Kyle is responsible for his actions. Kyle definitely, definitely was operating like he had a hurt ego, which I get. I don't know, y'all. I feel like they should have given Shane, Shayna and Kyle way more than they did. Was it just me? I really did not like Kyle's attitude and energy during the reunion. It was rubbing me in the wrong way. I feel like if he really loved and wanted to marry Shayna, he could have been way more graceful about the situation. I mean, hold her accountable. Yes. But don't be a jerk about it. I didn't like his energy. I guess there may be stuff from the pods that we, you know, aren't privy to that wasn't aired. But I was shocked and confused when Kyle called out Deeps. I didn't know what the heck was going on or where that came from. I will say throughout the season, I, outside of Kyle's odd pushing Shayna to be with him behavior and comments, I thought he was just a sweet guy who wanted to get married. And fell in love with the girl in the pod. However, during the reunion, Kyle was giving me creep vibes. I don't know, y'all. Let me know what y'all thought. He, he, uh, Kyle just feels like that guy who will push and push a girl to be with him, trying to convince her to be with him because he is only focused on I want her and pretty much just negates how the woman feels. Like one of those guys that feel like because they like you or want you, you obligated to reciprocate. I, he give me creep vibes. Yes, Shayna should have never accepted his proposal. Yes, Shayna should have broken things off in Mexico. However, I mean, y'all, it was obvious she wanted nothing to do with him. How did he not peep that? <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, on season one with Jessica and Mark, I think was their names. Similar situation, but Jessica was intimate with Mark and affectionate with him sometimes. She was not just cold. She was hot and cold. Shayna showed no affection or signs of wanting cow in the slightest. Shayna was not hot and cold. Shayna was just cold. So I really wish we could have understood Kyle's perspective. And the mother of the clan was accurate when she commented on their body language. Shayna's mood towards Kyle was not warm in any way. 
So he had ish to answer for as to why he would push being with someone who was so cold towards him. It, it wasn't logical. It didn't make no sense. It ain't, it ain't make no sense. Now, Shane got so freaking weird when he was asked if he had seen Shayna since the show. Child, y'all grown. And it is a really simple question. Either you have or you have not. But he got so freaking weird. I'm telling y'all, I look, I'm telling y'all, I don't want to put nothing out there on people. But Shane gives me abusive vibes. I'm sorry. He does. He does. He does. He does. Maybe not physical, but the way he acts in situations, I feel like his anger is scary and threatening. His mood is off. The nigga is just off. He moves weird. He really reminds me. God, y'all know what he remind me of? Shane reminds me of those guys who in public are the jokester, happy-go-lucky, ball of energy type of guys. But behind closed doors, they're raging monster. If you know, you know those type of guys. That is the vibes. That is the vibes that Shane gives me. He is extremely emotionally immature. Most of the cast is, though, child. The way he reacted in the pods when he called Natalie the wrong name, the way he flipped out just because Salvador did better at baseball than him in his dang church shoes, it was really, it was disturbing. And it was really disheartening to me to see Natalie being so emotional and defending him. The nigga was wrong. Period. The is she said was not okay. Shane's behavior got on my good side in how he shut down Shake and, and bonus points when Deep said that Shane pulled her aside to tell her how Shake was talking about her behind her back. But Shane's interactions with Natalie is troubling. It is. Taking responsibility for your action is not playing the tit for tat game. It is not saying, oh, but you did this and you said that. And that's why I did this. And that's why I said that. No. All you need to say is my behavior was unacceptable, period. I remember in elementary school, we had to say this pledge thing every single day. And part of it was, I am responsible for my behavior and the results of my behavior. Shane has not learned that at his big old age. I don't give a damn what Natalie said. I really don't. Though, I can speculate that he called her upset about the baseball-ish. And Natalie was likely being sarcastic, making jabs, making fun of him because that's her sense of humor. We've seen her do it. And Shane already having a fragile ego and being upset flipped the f*** out on her. If both people are wrong, it is not your place. If you're apologizing to call out the other person's wrong. You are responsible for your behavior. And if you are apologizing, then the only thing you need to be speaking on is your behavior that you apologizing for. And nobody can make you do ish, period. I'm sorry. I hate when people say that. Natalie seemed almost, I want to say, timid during their interaction. I don't know, man. It's really hard to have a full picture because their argument was not aired. So much ish went down that we did not get to see. They got together after the show to try and work it out. I said at the beginning that Shane gives me immature vibes. He is extremely mentally and emotionally childish. He does not have the wherewithal to know what he is feeling and how to express it in a healthy way. I get that they have different love languages. I get that he didn't like or maybe appreciate Natalie's sarcastic sense of humor and jabs, whatever. But there is a way to express that without raging the f out. I also did not like how the cast was quiet when Shane was trying to pretty much beat an apology out of Natalie, who was already crying and just downtrodden. Jared behind was quiet when she, until 
Shake chimed in on Mallory and Saul. And if I was Ayana, I would have been like, nah, nigga, you better sit your ass out of this one. Don't you dare come to her defense. I ain't like that. I ain't like that. When they played the footage of Jared and Mallory's conversation from when they first met in Mexico, Lord Jesus, that ish looked so bad. That ish looked bad. Jared's facial expression when he was saying, I would have done that. The ring comment, all of it was just terrible. I felt so freaking bad for Ayana sitting there like, bruh, that's like, I ain't coming home tonight kind of behavior. Ain't no way I'm going home with this nigga after I see that. Jared is a scrub. And I really wonder if Ayana had, if she would have married him had she known about this. I can appreciate Ayana saying that all of her anger was at Jared because he's her partner and he owes her loyalty that pretty much Mallory does not owe her anything. Now, in a situation like this where it's some random girl and your fiance, okay, I, I completely agree. However, in this case, no, hell no. Yes, Jared needs the brunt of things because he was her fiance in the situation at the time, but Mallory needs to take accountability for her part as well. Salvador said, guys, that was just disrespectful. And you know what? You ain't wrong when you're right. <laughs> Sal and Ayana deserve better. And I wish they would have played the footage of Sal confronting Mallory about this conversation and how she flipped the ish on him. How you play this, but don't play that. I want to know what really went down with Sal and Mallory. He just seemed so into her. And then it's like something switched. His energy towards Mal at the reunion scene, I don't know, man. Something went down. Something went down with those two. There is so much more to the story. And it was a cop-out, in my opinion, for them to be like, we not discussing this, we not discussing that, we not discussing nothing, I ain't gonna talk about that. Then why come to the reunion? Because this is what the reunion is for, to air stuff out and address things. If that is not why you here, then why you here? Don't care. Jared and Mallory's conversation was trifling. It was not a joke. I think that if Mallory could go backwards, she would choose Jared. Mal typically dates guys like Jared. That's what she said. So let me just hip y'all to game. Mal usually dates black guys and Jared likes dating mixed race or ambiguous non-black looking women. Child, call a spade a spade. It is what it is. Mallory is Jared's ideal and Jared is Mallory's ideal. Neither of them took real accountability for their conversation. I have no idea why it is so hard for grown behind people to just say my actions were dead wrong. I was dead wrong. That ish I did, that ish I said was trifling, period. Niggas was just skating, all reunion. They was just skating. Child, they should have just had the reunion at the damn roller rink because everybody was just skating. Now, look, I was happy to hear that Nick and Danielle are in couples therapy. Thank God, praise Allah, and hallelujah. For real. Because their relationship was a motherfucking mess. A mess. I really hope they are also in individual therapy as well. I actually really enjoyed seeing the update video of them integrating uh, you know, Danielle's cat and Nick's dog and the cat hissing. It was cute. Nice, cute video. I enjoyed seeing that they seem to be doing really well. I love that Nick's uncle surprised Danielle with his grandmother's ring. Family heirlooms, like I said, are usually not manipulative. They are usually a sentimental type of thing. I don't want to see people marriages crash and burn. So I enjoyed that little update. Like I said... Look, I watch stuff like this for the love story. However, <laughs> the 
Danielle and Nick got off easy as a bug. Nick should have been asked about the comments he made at the beach about Natalie and other ish. And I feel like he made messy comments in Mexico. But I can't remember exactly because I didn't make note of what he said then. But he made some messy comments throughout the season that he needed to be, you know, addressed about. They did not address any of Danielle's foolishness and how she acted a motherfucking fool the entire season. Ch Talk about dropping the ball. What the hell kind of reunion was this? Child, we needed Andy Cohen. We're like, what was this? I cannot believe that they did not address any of Nick and Danielle's ish from the season. I was literally baffled, for real. Nacha, I say Shake and Deets for last because I really have nothing to say about Shake, child. Who gives a ish? Who gives a... I ain't got nothing to say about Shake. Shake calling out Shayna for wanting to be on TV. Really? I could say the same exact thing about Shake. If we being honest. Because his entire storyline was him running around talking about Deep's body and how he didn't like how she looked in her bathing suit and how he wasn't attracted to her, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Really, Shake should have broken things off with Deep in Mexico instead of stringing her alone. Matter of fact, him and Shayna should just get together, child. Two peas in a pod. She just got the sense to lie. So, really, you could say that Shake did exactly what Shayna did, trying to stay on the show. But you know what? I also changed my opinion about you can work on physical chemistry. I, I changed my opinion on that one. Because someone on Twitter made a good point that women can work on physical chemistry typically, but usually men cannot. And I can buy that about men. I can buy that. I can buy that. I have personally experienced not being attracted to a guy right off the bat. But then the more I get to know the guy and the more I like his personality, he becomes more attractive to me. So that's why I was of the mind and had the opinion that you can work on the physical part. But I think good points were made on how men just typically do not operate like that. So I'll, I'll, I'll give him that. I don't like Shake just like any person in their right mind. However, I feel like they let Deep skate. And I wish they would have addressed some things with her as well. I love Deep's. Look, she was one of the best looking brides this season. Had the best bridal dress. She was dripping at her wedding. Good head on her shoulders. Nice girl. I got nothing but good things to say about Deep's. I could rave about her. However, if I feel like, look, I feel like it is very revealing how many of the women were repulsed by Shake in the pods, but Deep continued talking to him and even accepted his proposal. The way that Shake came at her and all the women was troubling and pretty disgusting. I mean, it is what it is. I would also ask her the same ish as Kyle in regards to being in relationship with someone who pretty much never showed her any physical affection and pretty much just going along. Really, Deep seemed pretty content. Like I said, I thought they were both going to say yes. I thought they were both going to say yes. And now hearing that the cast came to her about what Shake was saying behind her back, that explains her shift in mood. I, I think it was like that last episode right at the wedding. Her saying no at the wedding. However, I wanted them to ask her if she was unaware of that. If nobody came to her with information, would she have said yes? Because I, I feel like they were both going to say yes. She seemed on track to say yes from my viewpoint. Now, Deep did hit the nail on the head when she said that it is perfectly fine to not be attracted to someone. Nobody telling you got to be attracted to somebody, child. But that it was how Shake went about it and how he speaks. It is a point that Shake is oblivious to. Really, it is a point that many men with whitewashed ideas of beauty seem to be oblivious to. You do not have to dog out women 
that you are not attracted to, period. Men like Shake have this attitude like women need their stamp of approval. We don't need you to be attracted to us, child. Just go on with the girls you want and leave the girls you don't want be. I also loved when Ayana told Shake that he need to seek counseling. Look, child, I got a lot of mental illness in my family. Bipolar, etc. Personality disorders like narcissism. Shake definitely gives me narcissist. In my unprofessional opinion, he needs some intense therapy. Shake is a prime example of internalized racism. It was really disheartening for me to see how he spoke of Deeks the entire season. You don't see many brown people represented in these shows of love and desirability. You don't. So it was just really sad to me that he ran around desexualizing her and likening her to his aunt. Shake wants a white woman as his trophy for assimilating. It is a classic tale of a brown or person of color male who sees women of color as their caretakers and as their supporters, but not as sexual beings. I really ain't got nothing to say about Shake Child. He will just continue to get with white women who are probably as shallow as he is, who likely stereotype him and assume that he has money because he's Indian and it is really his only appeal to them. Child, when I tell you it be the most bad body, chicken legs, having niggas, running around criticizing women and they looks. Child, shake is no Adonis. And that is that on that. <laughs> and Shay's comment about Vanessa Child, look, if any other husband would have been sitting there while Shay said some ish like that about their wife, child Shay would have got yoked the hell up. The comment was disrespectful and uncalled for, really. I just cannot stand people who are just rude and obnoxious under the guise of I'm keeping it real. I'm being real. No, you just obnoxious and rude. But that's did get him together a bit. And Nick made some good points. Child, shake my nigga. You not winning no body contest. So you need to just sit down and keep quiet. I swear it be the most clown ass men being critical of women and their bodies. It really do. All in all, this was just a mess of a reunion. I literally have the same questions I had before the motherfucking reunion, child. The host pretty much let everybody skate. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video, especially if you watch it to the end. Make sure you check out all my videos on Love is Blind Season 2. If you like my content, please make sure you support my channel. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure your notifications are on so you will be alerted when I post TV show and movie reviews. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.